Good morning, everyone. Good morning. Welcome to Canoe Camp Christian Church. We are a forward leaning expression of Christianity where the individual expression is welcomed. Welcome all. Announcements. Probably the other thing I can remember to think of is this the last Sunday of this year. The next Sunday will be a new year. So, does anybody else have any other announcements? Uh, the opening prayer again, a uh, chalice praise as a thin one, 184, soon, very soon. 184. <laughs>
Samuel 2, 18 to 20. But Samuel was ministering before the Lord, a boy, a boy wearing a linen ephod. Each year his mother made him a little robe and took it to him when she went up with her husband to offer an annual sacrifice. And Eli would bless Elkaniah and his wife, saying, May the Lord give you children by this woman and take the place of the one she prayed for and give you give to the Lord. Then they went home, and the Lord was gracious to Hannah. And she gave birth to three sons and two daughters. And meanwhile, Samuel grew up in the presence of God. I'm also going to read Luke 2, 41 through 52. Each year, Jesus' parents went to Jerusalem for the festival of the Passover. And when he was 12 years old, they went up to the festival according to the custom. And after the festival was over, while his parents were returning home, the boy Jesus stayed behind in Jerusalem. But they were unaware of it. Thinking he was in their company, they traveled on for a day. Then they began looking for him among their relatives and friends. And when they did, did not find him, they went back to Jerusalem to look for him. After three days, they found him in the temple court, sitting with the teachers, listening to them and answering and asking them questions. Everyone who heard him speak was amazed at his understanding and, and his answers. When his parents saw him, they were uh, astonished. His mother said to him, son, why have you treated us like this? Your father and I have been anxiously searching for you. Why are you searching for me, he asked. Don't you know that I have, have had to be in my father's house? But they did not understand what he was saying to them. Then they went down to Nazareth with them. Then he went down to Nazareth with them and was obedient to them. But his mother treasured all these things in her heart, and Jesus grew in wisdom and stature and favor with God and man. One of the things that, as I watched the uh, evening uh, morning news, I learned that uh, Bishop Desmond Tutu had passed away. He's a person who was a great humanitarian. Uh, he helped to end uh, apartheid in South Africa. And I certainly think we should remember him and uh, just that he was a great man uh, for his time. In his time, he served God well. When I was looking at the church calendar, I was uh, uh, looking to see what the first Sunday after Christmas would be called. Well, to my amazement, it was called the first Sunday after Christmas. <laughs> I guess uh, as the lectionary was put together, they were uh, tired, or maybe uh, we can look at this Sunday as a, a, a time of being tired and recouping. A Sunday, uh, better probably name a reflection a Sunday. This is the last year of 2021, or the last Sunday of 2021, and we will never be traveling this way again. A new year lays before us. And as we reflect on the past year, what are the, some of the stories and events that you will remember of the past year as you reflect back on the past times? There will probably be some good times and some not so good times and some things that you would not like to try to remember or to reflect. Some memories, I think sometimes it is better left to sleep in the past and others you want to hang on to. Memory I learned is that it comes in different parts of the brain. It's not all stored in one place. It has many different functions with that in the brain. Various different things to various different points. I always thought the memory was one spot in the brain, but I learned that that is not the case. In my case, the older I get, the more I forget where my memory is being stored. <laughs> you know, all the different spots, and certainly my recalling them at times takes longer. The winter solstice has been celebrated and it has passed, and the darkest and the longest nights give way and slowly move into the uh, into the past. As we have lit the Advent candles, the, can the Christ candle was also lit. 
And wrapped around the Christ candle was uh, the, uh, the light of uh, the light of hope and joy and peace. And as we move into this new year, let us let the Advent candles speak and light our path. A new year lies before us. The future moves before us. Where are we going? Do we see the Spirit of God or God working uh, uh, in the past year in our lives as we reflect? Did we see the face of God? What is God? Or for that matter, what is life? These are deep questions that we ponder at times. I don't know if some of you remember Joan Osborne. She was a, a singer and she sang the song, One of Us. It's a beautiful song. The, the, uh, some of the, one of the lyrics, or some of the lyrics sent shock waves to the uh, uh, traditional waters of uh, 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 conservatism or Christianity, and they didn't like some of the lyrics that, that was uh, said. If God had a name, what would it be? She wrote, or she sings. Would you call? Would you call it to his face? If you were face to face with him in all his glory, what would you ask if you had one question? Yeah, yeah, God is great. She does all the singing for us. What if God is one of us? A slob like one of us. A stranger on the bus trying to make his way back home. Maybe the face of God is each one of us trying to find our way back home. <clears throat> Genesis 2, 7 reminds us that we are made up of dust in the breath of God. God looked us into the face and breathed into us the breath of life. And we became a living soul or a living being. What are we moving to or traveling into the future? Is the face of God which gave us our breath in the readings today, Samuel and Jesus are returning home from a major high event in their life. They were traveling and moving into the future, into the deeper within themselves as they grew in wisdom and knowledge. To me, there's a lot of similarities between these two stories. Both mother, mothers were blessed to have children that changed the world in, in a, a, a many different ways. Sarah, I mean, Samuel's uh, uh, mother, Hannah, was born but wanted a child very bad. A woman in those days who was, uh, who was barren was considered to be less than. Because she couldn't have children. She wanted a child so bad to preserve, preserve her name and her family's name, and she wanted a, a, a male child. And so that she would go and pray in the temple days at a time and would eat. And Eli saw her and told her that the God of Israel would grant her her petition, and she was to go home. She promised the Lord that if she was given a child or a son, that she was given back to the service of the Lord. And he, Samuel, became, uh, was born, and she became pregnant, and she had Samuel, and he was a Nazarite. That's a, a certain class of uh, individuals within the priesthood. And one of the things that I always thought that a Nazarite, a person who became a Nazarite, they weren't allowed to marry, but Samuel married. So that, that kind of threw that idea out the window. But these uh, uh, were people that were a uh, step above. They were considered to be righteous in a lot of different ways. For me, I see Samuel as a very influential and a righteous person. Uh, one, who, uh, uh, one of the uh, very important and righteous uh, prophets of the early prophets. He held to the priestly values that he, uh, uh, was set before him. Mary, on the other hand, was, uh, was Joseph was returning from uh, uh, Passover, and Jesus was the age of 12, and she's the, when uh, a Jewish child had bar mitzvah, 
They are uh, it's an age of accountability. It doesn't say that. It says that they were going to celebrate Passover, but it also mentions that he was 12, and that's when this happens for every Jewish boy and girl. It marks a celebration and a point of an, uh, in a, a child's life when they become considered to be adult, the age of accountability. One of the things that really sticks out to me uh, over the years, I have done a little bit of study or somewhat study on the women that were barren within the Bible. I have great interest in this study. One could almost say, there's a list I'm going to give, could almost say that even Eve was barren because the verses say that God helped her to have children. But clearly, Abraham Sarah was barren. Sarai, she was barren. Isaac Rebecca was barren. Jacob's Rachel was barren. Hannah was barren, who had Samuel. Uh, Samson's mother was barren. Uh, Elizabeth, who had uh, John the Baptist, was barren. And so the idea that I have put forth to a few people is that Mary also was probably barren. But the possibility of Mary being barren is very high on my list of understanding who Mary was. And I'll get to the importance of that. There are two considerations of, uh, about Mary and Mary's story, and one is the Catholic Church and one is the Protestant Church. The Catholics see that Joseph was married before, he had children, and Jesus never had a child outside of, of Jesus. So she became uh, the Immaculate Conception. She was conceived and born without sin. She's held in the high veneration, most of us know that, above the angelic spirits, and she was revered. I often wondered why an older man got to have such a, a younger bride, like Mary. Mary was young. She was considered to be a virgin. Uh, understanding that whole word and that whole concept of virgin, a young girl, uh, it, it kind of uh, has space for the idea of being married. And I often wondered whether or not, seeing how Joseph may have had other children from a previous marriage, that uh, they may have known that she was barren, or she may have known that she was barren somehow, and she was put under the care of Joseph, an older man, to care and look after her. But not necessarily to be married and have other children. So I can appreciate the Catholic view in some ways, but not all of them. So, that, and, and, but the Protestants uh, seem to think that Joseph married, uh, and, this, and, the, and this isn't written in the Bible, that Joseph went on to marry, uh, marry Mary, and they went on to have other children. Why is this of any interest to me? Why do I concern myself whether or not Mary was barren or not? Because Jesus was born, because of the social standing of a barren woman, she was considered to be the least of the least. She would not have been considered uh, in, in the social standards of their day of, of even being at the level of what the social standard was of that, which was even less than male. So a barren woman was even considered to be less than that. So she was would have been considered the least of the, the least. And Jesus was very, was very concerned about the least of the least, and he came for the least of the least. So why, what, what, is there a problem with the idea of, of Mary being barren, being the least of the least? Yes, but if she was really young, I don't know how you could say she was barren. She was young. She it's my opinion. She's coming into a time, you know. I don't know. I, I don't have it all figured out. I'm only suggesting this idea. Neither do the Catholics have it all figured out, neither do the Protestants have it all figured out. So there's a variety of ideas that can come into play here. The, 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 the thing that I see is that by Jesus being born into the least of the least of women, that it uplifts everybody else also. So, so the least of us become important. And that was really uh, Jesus' message. To the came to the least of the least and lifted it up. He didn't come to the wealthy and, and the knowledgeable and, and the priests of the day. He, he came 
from the least of the least. I understand this is debatable, and, and you and I will probably have a discussion on the way home. Might be a long ride. <laughs> I'll just go fast. <laughs> but nevertheless, I, I think it, 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 it's, it's at least can possibly fit into the scheme of things, I think, very well. What is wrong with thinking that Mary could have been better? Because she was young. I mean, if a woman's married and so old that she still has had children, okay, maybe then. There's a lot of indications that the women have that you know us men don't necessarily understand. And so I'm not going to get into the debate whether she was 12 years old or you know that whole age thing in there. Uh, uh, you know, whether or not she had her first menstrual period or not. I mean, all that stuff comes into play and I'm trying to understand what the idea of a virgin is and whether or not it means a young girl or what it actually means. Now, I'm not a woman, so I don't know how <laughs> how you can know whether or not you're barren or not. But I, I think there well, are I some don't that if you're a young girl, you can put that on you then. Like I say, you have to be an older woman married for a long time and still have to have children. Okay, then maybe I can buy it, but I don't buy it. Well, that's, that's fine. I mean, that, that's fine. I, I'm not asking everybody to buy the idea. I'm only asking to, to maybe contemplate the idea. And, and it's you okay. You also never hear that the guy might have been infertile, you know? Well, <laughs> well that was impossible then, heaven forbid. Well, yeah, it's a Couldn't blame them. <laughs> Well, the, the Greeks believe that the women had nothing to do with it anyway. They, they just uh, carried the child. They had nothing to do with, with uh, the pregnancy at all. And then why did they put women down and for being barren? When it was there? Because it was, it, was, uh, it was very important for social standard for a woman to have children and, and to, to have a family and promote the, the male name. All right, but if you said they didn't think women had nothing to do with it, why did they say I said the Greeks said that. I didn't say that. They probably figured you weren't a good carrier and it obviously messed his up. Yeah. <laughs> yes, Bob. <laughs> Having children was the only thing a woman was good for. <laughs> it, it was, I mean, You're right, Dean. I'm going to speak now as a sociologist, but it was also extremely important to Israel that. Jews have a lot of male children because Israel was surrounded by enemies. And so uh, if you wanted to stay remotely independent, you needed to reproduce. And I think that's why you have all of the biblical references that promote fertility and promote reproduction. It was very important yeah, yeah. for the survival. Well, if you go with the, I believe it's the Chinese way of looking at it, you have to have a son at least so that they can take care of you in your old age. <laughs> yeah, I think we'll stop that now. <laughs> uh, would you get something on? Um, no. Uh, so, so it, it, you know, even today, when I was growing up in, in, in my uh, conservative setting, I can remember the idea that a uh, large family was very important so that you could procreate your idea. So the more the more children you had, the more population you had, you would you would spread your idea by having more people and and you know you would indoctrinate along the way. And the more people you would have, the more but that idea would, would, would uh, live on. So if, if you want to kill an idea, you get rid of the people that think that way. That's that's in the old testament. That's why they wiped everybody out because they want to get rid of an idea. So, you know, women weren't seen as they are today. That's for sure. This is a, a, a late day thing. And I was thinking about coming over on the way over here about Desmond Tutu, how he uh, promoted the, the idea of, of uh, equality in, in South, South Africa. You know, that, that idea, in, in our lifetime, he was the first black archbishop in, in South Africa. There's a lot of firsts in our lifetime. What's, what is it going to be like in another hundred years? Well, this is starting to be normal, whatever normal is. You know, so when you start to think about it, there's a lot of firsts that happened in our life. First vice president, you know? Yeah. 
the, 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 the LGBT community has, is considered to be a, a level of equality now, where, you know, in the past it was not. You know, there's a lot of first. Uh, you know, women are definitely given rights and, and, and different ethnicities are, are, yes, we have a long way to go, but we're living in this time span when, you know, it, it, all these things are happening. Just one minor point on that. The LGBT community and women and blacks, we weren't given anything. We fought for it. Exactly. Amen, sister. And earned it. Yes. Excuse my uh, choice of words. <laughs> but uh, I'll just be not, I'll just be not yeah, I just leave that one for us. Yeah, it, there was a fight. I mean, there's no question of that. But the white males and white European males didn't want, did not want to give it up. That's for sure. And, and, even, and that fight like, just don't like the You mean you took it? Oh, well, hey, you took it. Okay. I, I mean, I, I think in some ways you can say that, yeah, it, you stood up for what you, you know, believed and thought was right, and, and you were right. Uh, and it well, was a long road. Yeah. And it was it still over. a long way to go. It, it's still a long road. I, I agree. Uh, the question I asked a long time ago to a, a group of uh, the pastors in our district was, you know, what is uh, equality of, of the sexes and, and, and races going to look like? Well, the only, the only response I got from out of the eight, or seven or eight that were there was, well, it's not going to be like the males. Well, okay, so if it's not going to be like the males, what's it going to be? I want that added perspective, not to be like the males, but something different, something more, a better ingredient. I want a better tasting cake or pie. That's what I want to see. I don't want to see the same. What bothers me is when women uh, or ethnic or what have you want to act in uh, the same way males do. I, I'm, I'm looking for something different. An added perspective, for sure. I have a Susan B. Anthony quote for you. Wherever women gather together, failure is impossible. <laughs> <laughs> and I got that from a male immigrant as a Christmas present. <laughs> we love you, Carol. <laughs> hey. Like I said, I, I'm looking for a, a, a society that moves to a better place. More caring, more loving, more nurturing, you know, from nature on down to businesses, what have you, uh, healthcare, a whole host of things. I, I think that we're on the edge of all that kind of stuff happening, I think, I hope. Well, you pointed out last week in your sermon that consensus is a more workable approach and females by and large have had to use consensus to accomplish anything. So that's a huge step in the right direction. Yes, it is. Uh, my, 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 so, so the pendulum is gonna start swinging. So if it swings real far to where uh, women rule the roost, so to speak, and, and dominate over top of male, what are they gonna do? They're gonna treat us like, like dirt, like they were treated years ago? I mean, I, I, I would hope that that's gonna happen. I mean, get to that place, but then they say, okay, yeah. Enough is enough. enough. This is how it's gonna be. So then you're gonna apply forgiveness, grace, and mercy, and you start a new era. And that's what Christ is about, forgiveness, grace, and mercy, as far as I'm concerned. It's not about judgment and, and all that kind of stuff, or, you know, an eye for an eye. It's about forgiveness, grace, and mercy. And that's, everybody knows that's a big thing for me, forgiveness, grace, and mercy. We have to get to that point where we get forgiveness, grace, and mercy. Or just like the song you were talking about, mm -hmm. John has to concern. We have to look into each other's face and see God right there yeah. in that face. I think no so. matter male, female, color, nothing. It's still God's in each, each of us. Yeah, we have to see God in, in each other's faces. I, I think that's just him. I kind of forgot what grace you gave us the definition of it once. What was it? <laughs> grace. Grace is, is, is like uh, uh, giving you a, a time space where you're not accountable for it no more. 
So you have a grace period where you, you know, like the, an example would be like you're given a grace period on the payment. So you're given a time span in which you're not necessarily accountable. Uh, I'll have to come up with a better one than that. You can put me on the spot. <laughs> uh, anybody else want to add to a grace what they think grace is? It's kind of a second chance. Second chance, yeah. That, that, that you cool. paid for where you messed up and now you erase the slate and you get to try again. That, that, that works for grace, yes. I think Jesus right. does that. Yeah, I'm simply just like whatever you did and it will be no more law behind your record or something. You know, it's kind yeah. of like, you know, I'm just going to forget about it. Well, you're given that grace, grace period for forgiveness, grace and mercy to enact and you know, become a part of your life, I think. Yes, Bob? Something that you may not deserve. Yeah, there you go. Yeah. Something you may not deserve. Yeah. Yeah. Exactly. That's very right. That, that would be a good one. Uh, that's probably the theological one of them, something that you have to serve. Um, and, and that's a big debate within the Christian church. Who should get that and what is necessary to get that? There's a whole host of theological perspectives of, of that. I, I think it's a free gift given to everybody. And 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 and, it, you know, and I believe in the possibility, the great possibility of everybody is going to be saved because of forgiveness, grace, and mercy. Because none of us are deserving of it. We're human beings. We're all frail. We all have things that we do. Yeah, because I just watched a show on some kind of Bible thing, you know, and I think it was a Peter something was asking Jesus, well, you know, like how all the sinners were down, being tormented in purgatory, and how long they would have to be there. And he said, I'll tell you a secret. Don't tell them, but they're all going to get out of it. Yeah. But don't tell a lot of people because then they won't be interested in something you did. Yeah. Even the Bible supports the idea of, of hell being annihilated. And, and, and hell was only for the fallen angels to start off with. It was a threat to use against the, the church, against us human beings, as far as I'm concerned. But uh, that, that's a, uh, But I definitely believe that in, in the possibility, I can't say for certain that every soul, every human soul is going to get saved because they're not going to say, I'm God. But I certainly believe. In the high, very, very, very high possibility that uh, almost to the point where I accept it to be true, that every soul, a human soul, will be saved. Because that, that, that's that's what the good news is about. It, it's not it, the good news, it, it's not good news if it always says a couple of God's elect and chosen and what have you. There's some group of people. What well, good news is that? Good news is that everybody, it's a free gift to everybody. And, and everybody's going to get it as far as I'm concerned. And I'm sure there'll be somebody. Somewhere along the line that will disagree with me that, but that's okay. Any other thoughts you want to add? By, by the idea of, of, of Mary being there, Jesus touches and heals and saves everyone, even the least. Jesus lifts up the least of us, the different, the special, those that society casts aside and moves them to an important place or a respectful place. The first will be last and the last will be first. That verse has come uh, again in the play. And I would close with this phrase If Mary was married, then truly Jesus lifts us, us all up. And we will return home to God. Oh, if she wasn't married, we might be lifted up. To be continued. <laughs> There's not just one way to understand. There's a multiple ways of understanding. Picture has many, takes many uh, shapes and forms. Uh, I guess I'm to remind you that the, the uh, communion is in the back, uh, also the offering plate is also. And Josiah will now play Bethlehem Scouts.
Thank you, O oh God, for the offerings that are given, thoughts, prayers, and monetary uh, offerings as each one gave, no matter what it was that they gave. We ask this in Jesus' name. Amen. The hymn of communion is 404 and remember for me. 404.
We had everyone except for one great grandson who was visiting his father. We had 27 at our table. That's a wonderful thing. That is. God has blessed you for sure. Any others? Just the joy that, you know, random acts of kindness is still alive. We went through Dunkin' Donuts this morning and that car had us just pay for our coffee. We didn't know that. I mean, it's just wonderful when something like that happens. Yeah, really good. Yeah. <laughs> So I was like, oh, wow, that's so nice. Yeah, it's thankful for you know, the season we got together with our friends and family, shared a meal. Yeah, we're tired. But, uh, <laughs> <laughs> but it was a wonderful time. Yes, Bob. I would echo Connie's sentiments, uh, although. Thought of 27 strips in my mind. <laughs> <laughs> so I was fishing one bowl. Oh, yeah. <laughs> yes. yes. Um, my wife is getting ready to head in for surgery in a couple of weeks, and we run in for running with some red tape with the work getting things approved. So we could use some maybe extra prayers that her job will be there after her surgery. Oh, uh, the job will be there. Yeah. Oh. Uh, and what is your name, may I ask? My Dara. Dara. It's Sarah with a D. Dara? Yes. Dara. Dara, I ask. The older we get, the harder it is to remember me. <laughs> <laughs> I don't remember them now, though. <laughs> Uh, any others? My friends that I, I've always expressed about, but uh, the COVID are doing better, but they still have a journey to go. It seems like those who uh, get hit hard with it, it's a long journey back. Oh, maybe just prayers like for my sister and, and my aunt. They had a ceiling fire on Christmas Eve day. The lamp or something ceiling like the hot fire. Luckily, the place didn't burn down, and, but there's more and some water and smoke damage, but it's livable and, uh, you know, it was kind of. She takes care of Tom Dan. So. Yeah. So she could yeah. use a lot of prayers. Yeah. Reading and I made it forward and back, and I also had another great grandson. Uh, uh, congratulations. Great grandson? Yep, yeah, great. Yeah, you say you travel. Um, any others? We have a lot to be thankful for. Really, we do. I, I'm not thankful for this church environment we have here. Share it and share our ideas as well. We don't have to agree. And I think that's wonderful. I think that's a wonderful way of expressing our spiritual life and our understanding of what we believe in today. Let us join our hearts and minds together. Yeah. Thank you, O oh God, for the many blessings that you give us. We are truly a blessed people. We live in a blessed country and a blessed time. There are many firsts along the way. We ask you to be with uh, Desmond Tutu as he is now in your presence. A great man. Lord, help us to hold him up as an example of humanitarian a great man that you mentioned. Many of us do many things. Our lives are important. We reach out however we can. Each of us care for one another. Sometimes we're not always recognized, and that's okay. We thank you for the free gift of the coffee this morning that people are reaching out. May we share that blessing and continue it on. We ask you to be with the church as it moves into the new year. We ask you to bless each church, each gathering, people who come together to study and to learn and to understand the wisdom of God. But the scientists sent out a new telescope to understand 
that you take pictures and look back in time and look into the future and see what's out there. There are many mysteries to be solved or to be understood or to be gazed upon in amazement. The universe is a wonderful complex thing. We're thankful for just the care that we have, that we give for one another. We ask you to be different with Dara as she is going into some health issues and she's concerned about her job. Lord, caring comes in many different ways and I pray that her employer would care and reach out and understand it. Connie, who had a great gathering of her family. Yes, she is blessed. As each one of us were blessed as we gathered together with our family and friends. Even if it was with only one or maybe two. True, we are blessed with our friendships. Safe travel. Many of us traveled and will be traveling. And, and, and we are thankful for the safe travel to Florida and back. Bob has been also as asking for safe travel for his family. Many of us travel the road to Bob. We also had a great grandson. Truly, he is blessed also. We ask you to be with Linda, Billy, and Amber, wherever they are at, and those that are not here with us and are only here with us. But just be with them in this time of the year. We ask you to be with Colin's sister Terry, and she uh, was looked after, and the fire did not happen in the middle of the night, and no one was harmed. She cares for her aunt. Bless her and watch over her as she continues to do so. Again, Lord, many acts of kindness are going on. All around us, every day, every minute of the day. Too many to recount along the way of life's journey. Bless us now as we end this new year, uh, end the old year, and we begin the new later on in the week. Help us to remember the blessings that we have and share with us not. We ask this in Jesus' name. Join me now in the Lord's Prayer. Loving God in heaven. Hallowed is your name. Your kingdom come, your will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Bless the day our daily bread. Forgive our sins as we forgive those who sin against us. And do us pray. Deliver us to evil. And the glory of heaven. Amen. Forever. For those who would like to recommit their life to Christ, Please consult us and uh, one of us at whatever means or whatever method. There's many different ways of communicating, but if you want to become a member of this church, please let somebody know. We would love to help you on that journey. The hymn of uh, invitation is Chalice Hymnal 143. 143, Joy to the World. <laughs>
Please stand for the benediction if you can. <clears throat> may God bless you and keep each one of us. And may God's face shine upon each one of us. And be gracious to each one of us. May God look upon each one of us with kindness. And may he grant us peace. And may we smile in the days ahead. Amen. Thank you.